described as sex. We know it worked in the 50s. It built the numbers of the state on enterprise. Later, we remove the, 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 the requirement to do so. The trade union has been raising these issues. Where do we invest the workers' money? And for what purpose? If we don't do it as workers, who should do it? We know that, and we have been saying these things, sometimes disputed by business, that business is on an investment strike, that business invests overseas, they export jobs. We know that in the absence of a prescribed asset, the trustees of our funds find it difficult to invest where the returns are low, even if it is for good cause. So when this debate is coming up, trade unions say we are prepared and we think this is a good idea. But we must separate bailouts from investment. We are not talking about bailing out. We are talking about investing and with a good return. Now, all of a sudden, business says, no, workers must wake up. Your money must not be invested in the state-owned enterprises. Money must be invested in the private sector because they're the only one who knows how to make money. But they're not telling us about Stenoff. They're not telling us about Brown. They're not telling us about the many companies that go under every day. The only reason we think business is raising this issue and all of a sudden they are sympathetic to the workers' money is because they think there will be a competition. Trustees now can decide 30% goes to the government bond and the others go to the private sector. They don't want that competition. Our view is that we must engage. This is workers' money. Workers must decide where their money must be invested. We cannot afford to lose ESCOM. We can't. Those in ESCOM under leadership and who have messed up must be arrested. Money stolen must be recovered. But ESCOM we can't lose because if we do lose ESCOM, it means the end of us. Every job will be affected if ESCOM goes under.